But beyond anything I say here, this is a book that when you're done, you're going to want to talk about it. There's just something exciting about how this author makes you feel. And maybe even just some things about, okay, yeah, there were some parts that might be a little bit cloudy on a first time read. And, and trust me, this is a book that merits multiple readings. But I think there's something exciting about exploring that of, wait, did this character just do what I thought they did? And you reread it and you're like, oh, it's even darker than that. Lemon by Kwon Yo Sun, translated by Janet Hong. What is it? From the Wikipedia page, her novel told through interconnected short stories, Lemon was expanded from her 2016 short story, You Do Not Know. Which doesn't really tell us too much, right? <laughs> it's safer to say you start the story off out in the aftermath of a death of Hei On, a young, beautiful girl who died from a blunt force trauma to the head, and we start to explore this murder through various character and points of view in the story. We see how the sister has started to have plastic surgery to look more like the sister. Another girl has ended up in therapy, and some others are being investigated for the crime and even abused by the police to reveal the details of them being potentially the murderer. And that's our journey as the reader is to kind of explore this world through the eyes of a different character as we jump around from three different narrators across 17 years and how have they reacted, learn or not learned anything from this murder. It's kind of like you're living in a haze and I can see how this is a very controversial element to the story where there's times where it's not even clear which narrator's head you're in. You must pick up through contextual clues of what's happening in the environment, their thought processes, and really embrace each of these characters to become more grounded in the narrative approach that Kwon Yeo Sun is taking in this story. And there's even one character that it, it kind of reminds me of those old movies where you'd see a mom on a telephone and you'd hear her be like, mm hmm, oh, she said what? And you only get one side of what's even happening in the environment. Well, that happens with one of the characters too, where all you get are, are this, this limitations. Her world is limited to just her point of view and you don't even hear how people around her are responding. All you get is her just being enveloped in her own grief, her own mire. But I think that's the engaging part of the story is trying to connect with how do people react to grief in different ways. And I think you'll see lots of reviewers warn you that this is not a traditional whodunit. This is a result of done it story. It's a meditation on grief and how we deal with it, on beauty and control, how does beauty impact us in our choices that we make in life? On class, where we see not everyone gets treated the same way. I think at the end of the day, people want closure. People want to understand that there's a design behind the suffering and the grief that they have, whether there is or isn't. I think that's something that a lot of people search for. So, so creating this story of characters wrestling with their mortality, wrestling with what is justice and what is grief and how do I get past this moment that happened 17 years ago is probably the most rewarding part of this book. And I say that this is a book that's probably at its strength with the grief and the suspense. The decision to not make this a whodunit was probably very challenging, but also very rewarding because I thought it was worth the journey. So the feelings that I got from this book were very genuine, exciting. They're very positive overall. And if I have to nitpick because, I mean, I guess I have to be honest, why wasn't it a perfect read? I gotta talk about the philosophy. I think the philosophy of this book is something that might've been on the weaker side, but again, at 160 pages books, it's hard to dock it that much, but just know that it wasn't extremely satisfying. It did touch on elements of nihilism, of there being no point in design behind life, of Christians, salvations, and the idea of how do we deal with grief and the idea of suffering in the world as well. And there's even kind of like this, in between ground of like, well, maybe life's worth just living in the moment. I, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't the most rewarding part of this book, but I appreciate that there's elements to have launching off points for people to discuss. I just don't think that if you're really into philosophy, that this is anything that's going to challenge your current 
views on the world or ways that you value life and your meaning in life. This is a book that I think captures a fun and very unique twist to the traditional whodunit. I would easily recommend this to someone who's into mysteries that wants maybe a different flavor of how mysteries traditionally play out. In terms of genre, it's definitely in the mystery slash psychological fiction genre. The style's very experimental with the point of view that can be challenging for some readers and is definitely something that you would want to put on your thinking cap for. The tone is dark. It has elements of being exciting and entertaining to read, but that doesn't mean that there's not murder lingering in the background. Overall, I kind of floated between three and four stars. I'm rounding up to four stars because I did enjoy the read. Even if there were certain things that fell flat, I don't hold too much against it being that it was a 160-page book. Do I think it's worth it? Depends on what you're looking for. Like I said, if you're into murder mysteries or maybe even just looking for a twist on the traditional whodunit, this could be a book for you. As my first foyer into Kwon Yo Sun's writing, I definitely enjoyed it and look forward to what she does in the future and I will be checking out more of her works. I'll leave a playlist down below for you to check out those talks when they do happen. Now, make sure you let me know what you guys thought of this book if you've already read it. Thank you so much for listening today. My name has been Una. By the time this video comes out, I will have already released a spoiler-filled chat because when you're done with this book, you're going to want to talk about it. I'll leave a link to that as below as well so that you can check out and maybe share your thoughts on the journey. Una out.